All right. Hello and welcome to my first screencast on using Ardor to record and edit podcasts. Um, I wanted to go over a few quick items real quick. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and change this from raw output. I want that to be normal. So I've got a little thing at the bottom here that will show us if we're typing anything on the keyboard. So um, first thing I want to talk about how to get up and running. Uh, this is a stock version of Ubuntu 10.04 uh, long-term stable release. And I've added a few PPAs by a gentleman named Falk TX. And he has a, a little on the Ubuntu forums at this link right here. Uh, we have uh, instructions from him on how to install the KX Studio packages, which will give you the latest and greatest updated packages uh, for doing some audio goodness. Uh, next, we can either go to the Software Center or we can use the command line using app-get and we can install Ardor and uh, QJack Control are the two apps we're going to be using for, for right now. Um, one of the first trip ups that you're going to want to make sure you do um, is using gedit. And you're going to do this as root, but I'm just going to do it right here so I don't have to pass it. type any passwords since uh, uh, I got the. You'll see my passwords as it gets typed in. Um, and you want to go to under file system, Etsy, security limits.conf and you want to make sure you add right here see this audio group you want these two lines you want real-time priority 99 you want a memlock unlimited once you add those to here just like so you save and exit and then you're gonna to want to make sure that under users and groups Make sure that your user, if we look in here, is in the audio group. So as long as you're in the audio group and you have that stuff added, Jack should start nice and cleanly. So the program we're looking for is this QJack control. I've actually already got Jack running, but it'll kick on and show my connections on the audio tab. Right there, and this is me capturing my audio. So um, now we're looking at connections. This is all the writable and readable. Right now, I just have systems, which I have two capture and two playback, and then I have uh, another program I'm using in the background called Jack Capture to capture my audio so I can uh, do the Ardor stuff and still get my audio. And then um, as we add clients, they start stacking up, and then we can just make connections between them, which is very handy. We can also do the same with MIDI, um, both Jack MIDI and also MIDI. But since we're podcasting, I'm not going to worry much about that. So let's go ahead and open Ardor. And this is something that's intimidating for a lot of people. Um, oh, I, before I do that, while that's opening, I want to go into setup real quick. And uh, I just want to show you, this is my H4 configuration. If you're using... Uh, this will pretty much all be default. Uh, you want to pick the interface you're going to use. H Hardware 1 for me is my internal card, and I've also got my Zoom H4 plugged in. I made a profile for it, but you don't have to make a profile. Um, podcasting doesn't require a real low latency, so 1024 is probably good. 44.1 is what my um, sample rate is. If you're using a USB audio device, you almost always want to set this periods to 3. This will give the overall latency. That's really all you need to worry about in this whole screen for setting this up. Um, I haven't changed anything, so that way when you punch that. Now, Ardor, if you start Jack through QJack Control, won't pop up with any options for starting Jack. Otherwise, it'll have another tab right here, and that lets you configure it right through there. But I like using QJack Control because it allows me to pull up these connections and uh, make all the connections that I want. So let's go ahead and open a session. I've got uh, uh, a raw session of one of our episodes, episode number 52 of the Open Source Musician Podcast. 
we're going to go ahead and open this one, but if you just type new, it'll create a new one. Uh, so here's what I have. I have right here you can see um, this guy has the connections up, and you can see this is me talking because it's connected to this in Jack. If we go back to key jack control, you'll see that system capture one goes into Arter audio in one. And if you click here, you'll see that connection here is on audio two. So I should have said audio two, right? Did I mess up? Capture, oh yeah, it is. Capture two is going to audio one. And so we can we can disconnect that. And now you'll see no more jumpy. And uh, a lot of times when you start, you won't get this mixer strip in here. And so to turn that on, it's under... Um, is it options? No, I think it's window view. No, it's under view. Show editor mixer. See if that isn't up there. It's under view. Show editor mixer. And then you get one mixer strip and then it switches that mixer based on which track you've you've um, selected. If we want to add a track, because when you first start out, these tracks won't be there. Uh, right click right there. And you can pick a mono, stereo, three channel, six channel, you know, however you want. You really want mono for most of this. Uh, this track and tape, let's just keep that normal. You can say how many. Let's say you want to add 10 right there of mono tracks. You can do that. Or you can create a bus. We don't really need to worry about buses for podcasting. So this is what I did. And then I used the Mumble client to set up a voiceover IP session with my co-host. And if we... Let me make sure I hook in the connections. I want the output of Arter to go to my jack capture. So I want that to connect, that and that. And I want that and that to connect. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. What am I doing? Master, okay. My bad. I don't know what I was thinking. Brain farted for a second. So now uh, I can make sure that you guys are going to hear what we got going. So if I start playing this, this is just our... So you can hear us kind of BSing before we start, and then right about there you'll see the waves getting real good. That's... Okay, so this is a um, uh, this is a recording of him. So these are the mute buttons, and then we have a solo button. So solo means that if I have a bunch of tracks and I want to just listen to this one, I can punch solo. Mute means if I don't want to listen to a specific track, I can just mute that track, and it won't play it. So let me solo this guy and show you. This is my the mumble version. of mic talking and uh, it's okay I mean it's adequate so, so for most podcasts that'll be just peachy keen however um, we do a double ender so um, we use Dropbox right here and uh, he uploads a flack version of his Arter session that he, he exports so if we want to import that we just go here and then I can go to Oops. I go to Dworth and then down to my Dropbox folder. I have OSMP folder and there's his February 8th. And you have some options here. You can do one track per file or one track per channel. So if you have like a stereo or a three three channel file and you want each one separately, you can, you can split it up into each channel. We've got one track per file right here. You can also do, uh, this is going to add it as a new track. You could have it just added to the region list, which I'll show you in a minute. And then, or as a new tape track, we're not going to worry about that. We want it as a new track. So we'll hit OK. Let's gonna go ahead and import that. And that takes a second. Over here you can see this is uh, what it was calling the region list. So if you do multiple takes and you make screw ups, you can delete it out of here and, and leave those alternate takes over here 
And uh, it's handy if you're recording multiple takes and you want to come back later and, oh, I forgot to talk about something. I don't want to re-record it. I don't hand it in another one. When you mess up, if you hit Control-Z and delete, it won't actually delete the track. It just deletes it out of the editor list here. Uh, it won't delete it out of the region list. For example, if I go ahead and take this track and I punch delete, it's now gone, but see, it's still in the region list. So if I want to add that back in, boom, got it right there. So here you can see this is his recording, and it seems to line up. This is why I like recording this other one. See, see his waveforms there? They don't quite li line up enough. So control scroll zooms in the editor window, and we'll zoom in to the beginning. We'll go all the way back to the beginning. Zoom in quite a bit, make sure we're back at the beginning again. And then see, he's got more pre-roll than I did. He hit record before I did. So we'll, we'll kind of scoot that back and then we can just kind of manually, it doesn't have to be dead on, but we can zoom in quite a bit and we can get this to where, if I unsolo that and I mute that, I can loop just this, this region to check for how it lines up. So to do a loop, I want to um, hit loop range. We're going to add, if we right click there, no, nope. trying to remember how to do the loop range. Oh, here we go. Right click and then in, in that and then drag. And that'll, and then we can set a loop range. So now we got this loop here and then this is the loop button. So we did. And that'll just play this over and over again. So then if I mute this, so that's the mumble version, live version. So it's a little bit of phase. I mean, it's not it's not music, so it's not going to be a big deal. So now I can mute this track. I know I have that kind of basically lined up. Now I want to go back to the beginning, make sure I trim. I know this is where I start talking. So what we can do is deselect all of these. I want to just click this track and you see how it goes to that little key right there. We can drag this in. So I'll drag it to where it lines up right at the beginning of that track kind of. doesn't have to be exact. We're not actually using this track, but to make sure sometimes when you import stuff, they get out of, out of wacky. So let me make this full screen. I'm not actually seeing the bottom of the screen here. Anyways, so make sure we jump all the way back. We'll get this lined up pretty close. We'll get this lined up pretty close. Now we can now we have three separate tracks and we don't have any breaks in the track. So if we hit control all A, we select all those tracks, and now when we drag, we can drag them all in. So we know, um, I don't have a little scrolly now, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to scroll this window over since it doesn't fit. So under options, what we can do is if it's not fitting on our screen, this is another tip and trick. I'm trying to remember where it's at. I think it's under miscellaneous. We're looking for font scaling. Maybe it's under window. Maybe preferences. Font scaling. We can turn this down and see. It'll kind of scale everything to fit better on our window. So that's about the max I can turn that down. Might be too small though. So anyways, there we go. Still can't see the strip at the bottom. I'm not quite sure why that's not maximizing properly. Well, anyways, so what we can end up